Wizard 101 has been around for 15 years and has been receiving new updates and expansions throughout that entire lifespan. But is it possible to beat all 15 years worth of content without dying once? That's the question I've set to answer and today I'll be taking on one of the game's most difficult dungeons, Shibalba, where if I die, I delete my character and end the series with this video. Shibalba is one hell of a dungeon. Just for reference, every single fight in here is a 4v1, with the final fight especially hosting four hard-hitting bosses that, in true Azteca fashion, never run out of pips. But we'll cross that bridge when we get to it, since there's three fights before then, all of which are annoying in their own right. Starting with the first boss, Yakuti Farwalker, who's especially annoying because he's a myth boss, which means he's packing loads of stuns that make me unable to take my turn, Earthquake to break my buffs, and Humongo Frog. His three minions are no exception to that annoying rule, possessing shields to weaken my hits, several stuns of their own, and even Faint, which buffs their next incoming hit by 70%. Yeah, they're using my two favorite spells against me, Faint and Humongo Frog. Let's let him know that you need a license to carry those. He's not stunning me this round, which is sick. He's putting the Ninja Pig weakness on. Yeah, they're gonna do their whole thing over here. That's fine. I got a lot of health to work with still. I'll probably pop a cleanse here. Forest Lords are in the hand though, which is big time. Here comes the frog. As long as the boss man does an earthquake, I should be good to get at least two of the three minions down. The problem is he's gonna have earthquake pips next turn. Am I optimistic? If he does earthquake there, that's so like wildly unfortunate. Okay, it's just the frog. Woo! That could be way worse than I thought it was. Really? Oh, let's uh, try that one more time. Maybe it'll work this time. But as long as this one hits, there should be at least two minions dead. Pretty much as predicted. Those two guys are out of the picture. Okay, awesome, he's not hitting yet. So even if he does Medusa, I've got a regen to cover it and passively heal me up throughout. It's called passive income. It can crit, it cannot crit, doesn't really matter. What matters is that I get the healing from it because the boss, oh, he's packing pips. With the Basilisk tick on, this could be a great time to start fainting away. First faints on, and then from there, I'll probably just drop another one. There's a blade that I need, I'll throw it on. And this is my third blade. I would love, again, I'd love to find a forest lord. It might not be likely, because I know I discarded one and I know I used one. So I have one more somewhere. There's a lot of cards. Oh, I'm pressing the button. I don't know if it kills boss. It comes very close though. Okay, it does kill boss. Goodbye, everyone. That's the first boss down. Probably the easiest of the bunch. Once we put down Yakuti and his arsenal of Humongo Frogs, we attempt to free some ancient Azteca spirits who, unfortunately, are completely bound to Morganth, the main antagonist of this arc. See, Morganth is following some ancient prophecy and attempt to gain deity adjacent power. And the reason she's made her way to this giant meteorite of Shibalba is to fulfill that prophecy by, quote, making the sky fall. Yeah, she's on some chicken little type, but instead of it being just a terrible box office flop, there are genuine consequences aside from incredible profit losses. If this giant meteorite rains on Azteca, the entire world along with its inhabitants will be forever lost to time. Our job is to put a stop to it because mass extinction isn't cool hot take. But to interrupt Morganth's ritual, we need to tear through this next boss, Skirkus Screaming Moon, who happens to be the only cheating boss of the dungeon. At the start of the duel's first round, Skirkus will summon this obnoxious storm minion to fill the vacant slot of the duel, but this guy does more than just stand there and be menacing. Every two to three turns, Skirkus will deal a tiny amount of damage to this poor sap and heal herself for 3,000 HP, meaning our best course of action is to try and take her down in one to two shots. Combine this with her sampler of debuffs and you've got yourself one tanky cheating boss. But we've been through worse, so I'm sure it'll be fine. I'm still kind of mad about going from second. That's really unfortunate. I'm going to lead off with a Fortify anyway. Scarecrow is huge though. If she Dr. Vaughn's there, that's really difficult to deal with. Thankfully not the case. I might, honest to God, just put a regen on now. Sandstorm, you know, he's, he's an Arc 2 mob doing his best. And now we save up for a minion wipe. What I would love to draw though is none of what I'm getting. Tempest, I don't remember how many pips this guy has. I'll just hope it's not a lot. Oh, he's stunning, man. Are we really playing like that? Get a life. Get a life. I just say was YouTuber. That is crazy to say that. But anyway, here's the TC blade. And this one blade with the boost on these guys. This is what I was worried about. And the damage isn't really that bad. It's again, the minus 50% heal. The minions will go down. Again, the one on the end will get revived. But I think I can maybe go for a quick kill here. I'm getting pretty much most of what I need. The only thing I do need is a freaking hit though. <laughs> That's what I need. She's gonna start healing off this guy very soon is the problem. Oh, this is gonna do a lot of damage. This is gonna do an easy thousand probably. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I'm probably gonna have to take this way slower than I was hoping. Adds up quick. There's the other faint though. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'll sate her first. If she regens health, there's nothing wrong with that. The goal is to one shot her regardless. And then I can pop this second faint on. Three blades, two faints as well. It's a lot on boss there. Mm, does it kill? Eh, it'll probably kill. Let's just run it. 
No crit, it honestly might not kill, especially with that fortify up. Okay, I think it just barely did. <laughs> with Skirkus easily disposed of, we find even more ancient Aztec and ghosts begging us to take down Morganth so they can return to their eternal rest. Until Morganth yanks their leash and pulls them her way, presumably to use their power in her apocalypse bringing ritual. As we head further across this meteorite and into its next dual circle sized crater, we meet up not with Morganth, but yet another boss who just so happens to have maybe the most metal name yet, Quack Cries Blood. Now this aspiring SoundCloud artist is, unlike his kick ass name, pretty mediocre. His fight is a 4v1, so we can't underestimate it too much, but he doesn't have the obnoxious amount of stuns that Yukati had, or a somewhat annoying cheat like Skirkus. He's just a guy who, while having access to haymakers like Ifrit and Sun Serpent, isn't anything out of the ordinary. At the very least, he'll make a good warm up for our final showdown on Shibulba, so let's beat that up. Turn one Ifrit. We really gotta do the turn one Ifrit. Oh, that sucks too. Damn. That's an unfortunate global. Yeah, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna drop that. Would love for this regen to crit. There's the crit. Love to see it. There's the Forest Lord. There's the Cleanse Charm as well. I think I'm just gonna drop this now. Meteor, he's in Azteca boss mode. We're saved. And the crit block too, just to add insult to injury. This blade can go off. I'll probably hit as soon as I can, even if Grim Kalaka can live with the buffs I've got. That's the goal of this first hit. Get those two storm guys out of the way. I don't know what the f that was. Oh, it's the ice. Oh, he's actually doing me a huge favor. That's so crazy. He's throwing. He's getting flamed in team chat. And then I can just go for this Force Lord, hopefully clear out those two minions. It hits there. It definitely kills the two storm minions, which is a huge boon. Oh, we killed him too. Actually, I'm, I'm capping. It's Cap City. It's just us and the boss. This fight's pretty much as good as done. As long as I don't throw horribly, which could also happen. But three blades and two feints is more than enough to kill Guy here. And he doesn't really have any way to stop it. He has no, as long as it hits. That's the only uh, caveat. And it did. Oh, I think he lived. Oh no, he didn't. That's clutch. See, I told you his name was misleading. Seriously, that guy was about as durable as wet paper. Weird choice for a final bodyguard there. With that, the final area of Shibalba is open to us. But before we begin our confrontation with Morganth and her posse, I want to shed a bit more light on the lore of the spiral as a whole and what exactly Morganth is aiming for in the first place. But to do that, we need to go back in time all the way to the beginning of time in the context of the spiral. Before the spiral we now traverse through existed, there was once one massive Pangea-like world known retroactively as the First World, inhabited by three dominant races. The Giants, who ruled over the skies, the Tritons, who controlled the seas, and the Dragons, who made the land their domain. These three factions were known as the Elder Races, and they constantly waged devastating wars against each other that scaled across the entire Old World. The destruction was so widespread and so severe that the entire First World itself began to splinter apart, sending massive land fragments adrift across the stars, floating aimlessly and without a binding force. As this war between the Elder Races continued to drag on and erase the First World from existence, Bartleby, the big-ass tree lying at the center of Ravenwood, and Grandmother Raven, the narrator of our adventure and spiral deity, used their combined powers to weave these fragments together with a musical score known as the Song of Creation, birthing the collection of worlds we now know as the Spiral. This Song of Creation was given to a surviving clan of Aztecosaurs from the Old World called the Lords of Night, who were given the duty of protecting and looking after this universe-altering power against potential threats. The surviving Lords of Night currently reside on the Meteor of Shibalba, and Morgan's primary aim is to wrestle this sacred score right from them and rewrite the entire spiral in her image, along with fulfilling the aforementioned grand prophecy. As we finally catch up to Morganth and get ready to throw hands, she crushes our hopes, stating that her ritual is already complete and that the Song of Creation is in her possession. However, she leaves her right-hand man behind to eliminate us for good along with Azteca. Malastir, he's back and he's pissed. He wants revenge for, you know, killing him with a Leprechaun back in Dragonspire, and he's way stronger here than he was before. Malastir is a pain to deal with. He's unkillable, possessing complete immunity to all schools of damage along with loads of hard-hitting death spells and debuffs. Since the guy can't take damage, the only way to get rid of him is to defeat his three minions who, oh, oh, wait, wait a second, did I say minions? I meant minions singular, because two of these sidekicks are bosses. These two bosses suck to deal with. They both deal remarkably high damage, much more than any of the other 4v1s we've seen so far throughout our adventure. They've also got plenty of buffs and shields, but unlike other bosses in the game, they're not afraid to use them. Even the minion, Grim Kalaka, is on the bulkier side and can benefit from the ice boss's global spell, which passively boosts all ice damage by 25% as long as it's up. My strategy for this fight is pretty simple. Put up my own global, sanctuary, and heal spam away until their firepower dies down. As long as this sanctuary can stay up and boost my heals, I should be able to find myself an opening somewhere. All right, this is gonna suck. Oh, I do have a Sank, that's so sick. I'm gonna take a ton of damage, turn one, probably. Oh, Lord of Winter, good God. That's a big hit to start. All right, didn't do too, too much. The pip loss is the problem, because now I'm gonna have to wait a turn to save her. But I think I'll mostly be able to hold out in the meantime. 
and I don't block crit either. Not an amazing start. Like the pip loss from that Lord of Winter really, really sucked. Although I'll probably still be okay if I don't get infectioned by Dr. Vaughn off rip. That's what'll kill me. If I can draw the damn thing. Jesus, this is crazy. There he is. Please don't Dr. Vaughn. Please don't Dr. Vaughn. Please don't Dr. Vaughn. Please don't Dr. Vaughn. Okay, just a natural attack. Oh my God, this is so much for only being two pips. Wow. But if the Seder hits, <gasps> he took the fucking Seder off. No, dude. Oh, this is a really, really bad opener. Everything that could go wrong has gone wrong. At least if the Seder hits, I can stay afloat for a little bit longer. Would love for a crit. I might actually need a crit the way this is going. There we go. Didn't do a lot because that fucker took the Sanctuary off. He ruined my open. There's another Seder in the hand. I'm not drawing the Fortify, which is what I actually need. There it is. Mouse just stole all his pips. The boss is stream sniping. <laughs> he really is. But the minus 20 Fortify is coming up, so we can all be happy about that. Another crit. That puts me pretty much back to full health, so I can stall for a bit. He's using the Bone Dragon. He still has eight pips too, crazily enough. He just never runs out. The guy's a wellspring of terror. What happened to the Dark Sprites back in Dragon Spire, you know? Can we bring that back? Another big damage hit too, yeesh. I really don't feel comfortable even hitting now. Usually you can wait for these to be over, but they don't end, man. They just keep getting pips and keep hitting with the hardest shit. Oh, another eight. This dude does so much. God, this thing again, man. It does a clean 1K no matter what. I would say for Four Sword if I, have one, if I had one in the vicinity. The problem is I don't, and I don't know when he's gonna show up. No block. Oh, it's gonna do over a thousand. Oh! Yeah, I don't know. I think we're just over here. But you, but you never know, huh? All right, this guy hits, and I think I'm dead. Yeah. Hey, GG's. And the run is over, huh? Well. But that's it, huh? After a year in the making, surpassing all my own expectations of how long I'd survive or even how well the series would do analytically, Wizard101 Dyquil's Delete has come to a close after a, let's be honest, pretty poorly played Malice Tear fight. I've got mixed emotions about this, to be honest. On one hand, I was pretty burnt out on Wiz, and it was difficult to stay motivated while working on these Azteca videos, especially for two reasons. One, Wizard101's second arc is a slog. It's dense, repetitive, a defeat and collect quest incarnate, but the much more impactful reason was, creatively, I was stuck in a box and I knew it. You at home can probably relate to this. You've got a cushy gig, something that while a bit unengaging, consistently gives you the safety and benefits that keep you comfortable. Whether that's a job, a friend group, or a stupid YouTube series about not dying in a children's game, it's easy to stay in the box, the metaphorical warm bath, because it's got certainty to it. Sure, it may not make you a millionaire, or you might not be creatively pushing yourself every video, but hey, it's certain, you know what it's like, and the grass isn't always greener. I think it's a good thing in the end, at least for me, that this series is over. It's been a long time coming, and I'm happy with it as a body of work. It's the series that kickstarted my channel, so of course, I'm sad to see it go, but I'm both excited and anxious in equal parts for the future of this channel and where my creativity will take me next. So to wrap things up, I'd like to say this. Whether you've watched the whole series or this is your first interaction with the channel as a whole, thank you. Stay tuned to the channel if you've enjoyed this series. There'll be plenty of similar content in the future, whiz related and otherwise. Like the charity lock I've started undertaking this month. It's a Pokemon Nuzlocke, but every time a Pokemon dies, I donate $5 to the domestic abuse hotline. There'll be streams on Tuesdays and Thursdays, along with videos eventually. So go click those if you're interested. Oh, and uh, as always, see you guys next time.